President Bill Miller, Vice President Hilbert, honorable members of the City Council, members of the school board, dedicated fellow city employees, and residents of the great city of Richmond, good afternoon. I'm pleased to be with you today to share my vision for Richmond and my hope that you will join me in investing our resources in the areas that reflect our shared priorities. Before I begin, I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the incredible hard work and dedication of our team. Chief Administrative Officer, Selena Company Glenn, Deputy <laughs> Deputy CAO for Finance and Administration Lenore Reed. Budget Director Jay Brown. projecting 
declining revenues within other areas of our budget from sources such as motor vehicle licenses, the planned reduction in the payment in lieu of taxes from our utilities, and aid from the Commonwealth of Virginia and the federal <coughs> government. Additionally, our budgets for the past two years have been bolstered by an increase in collections of delinquent personal property taxes. Thanks to the delinquent diligence of DCAO Lenora Reed and the finance team. But as we have worked hard to bring those dollars in, it means that there is less available to collect, and we are adjusting our budget accordingly, reducing the projected collections by $1.6 million. <coughs> Additionally, recent changes in the city's tax delinquent program, a property sale program approved by city council, will also require we adjust projected collections down by $2 million. Those of you who have been around a while know that most things don't get cheaper over time. They get more expensive. The cost of doing business as a city government are going up, additional, adding additional burdens to our already tight budget. This year alone, the cost of health insurance and retirement benefits for city employees will increase by $3 million. Our share of the state mandated salary increases for employees in our constitutional offices will require an additional $900,000. Our obligation to cover the rising costs of medical care and food services for inmates in the city jail will require an additional $1.2 million to be appropriate in our budget. The rising cost of contracts for core services within our Department of Public Works will also cost an additional $1.2 million. I applaud this council's recent expansion of our tax relief program for the elderly and disabled that will help residents living on a fixed income to stay in their homes, an essential goal that I share. But the fiscal reality is that it will require we budget $1.9 million in additional funding to support the program. So, after crunching the numbers, it's clear that our net $12 million in revenue growth barely covers the nearly $10 million we face in rising costs from non-discretionary obligations. To put it simply, we only have enough dollars to maintain the status quo. Madam President, I do not believe that the status quo will advance our city into the upper echelon of American cities. I do not believe we can continue to build our budgets on deferred maintenance and delayed investment. The budget I present to you today, which fulfills all of our legal requirements and mandates, is designed to build on our successes and address the challenges we face as a city in a meaningful way. Madam President, I believe that providing improved, consistent service to our residents requires sustained investment in the human capital that is required to support our citizens and keep them safe. We must acknowledge that we have the lowest paid government workforce in Central Virginia. That's just a fact. That is why my budget provides a 3% cost of living adjustment for our general employees, the first increase of its kind in 15 years. Service and Response Department, which runs RBA 311, 
so that we can reduce wait times and provide a higher level of customer service to our residents. But it's simply not enough to just take the calls. For those who call to, re to, who call to a report a paving need or to request a sidewalk repair, we are simply years behind and millions of dollars short of what we need to resolve their issues. Today, we find the priorities that matter the most, our schools and our neighborhoods, are struggling the most. Despite repairing 175 miles of road, 2,600 alleys, 3,200 sidewalks, and 50,000 potholes over the last two years, our streets are in a state of disrepair. Additionally, we also know that too many of our children are not getting the education they need. Our students are in classrooms with outdated technology, inadequate curriculum, and lacking the additional support from school counselors, reading specialists, and other support programs. Our children's schools are ill-equipped to provide the pathways to opportunity they deserve. And all these insufficiencies are contributing to the achievement gap. For me, this is simply unacceptable. In a city doing so well economically, how did we get here? To answer that important question, I think it's helpful to review what we've done historically and haven't done to get to where we are here today. The recession that hit just over 10 years ago was preceded in 2006 and 2007 by tax cuts that took the city's real estate tax from per $100 of assessed value from $1.29 to $1.20, where it has remained for the last 11 years. Just 15 years ago, that tax was $1.38, and 30 years ago, it was $1.53. Regardless of the reasons for these cuts, one thing is certain. This began a period of disinvestment in Richmond, made worse by the recession, and from which, despite our growth, our core infrastructure has not been properly maintained. Our annual budget for streets and sidewalks for the past decade has been a fraction of what we needed to adequately maintain our aging infrastructure. Yes, we can blame the weather, but it's our budget that drives our ability to keep up. Additionally, and perhaps most critically, during the recession, we saw a significant cut in both state and local investment in our city schools. I've been vocal this past year about the fact that the Commonwealth of Virginia is failing to fulfill its constitutional obligation to fund the true cost of public education, which has financially devastated schools like those here in Virginia. We've done our best to fill the gaps left by the state. But at the end of the day, we have asked our schools and our neighborhoods to sacrifice and to wait for years as we climbed out this whole recession, and in turn, we've deferred our maintenance and our investments. Madam President, it's time for us to have the tough, honest conversations about what it will take to build the city we want. It's time for we as elected leaders to demonstrate we have the courage and the vision to take the actions required to make Richmond not just a top 10 place to visit, but a top 10 place for people to live, for all of us to live. And that begins today. Ladies and gentlemen, this budget marks a new beginning. With this budget, we have an opportunity to invest in our children, our families, and our neighborhoods to build the city we all deserve. As a city, we only have so many places to turn to meet our needs. I firmly believe that we can no longer cut corners and plot our challenges to future city leaders. We've done that enough. Additionally, the state has proven once again its unwillingness to meet its obligations to localities and school divisions like ours. And while I, do every, I will do everything in my power to encourage future economic growth that will increase and expand our tax rates, 
We cannot wait to invest in ourselves today, and failing to do so will only make it harder for us to be competitive tomorrow. For these reasons, I have included in this budget a restoration of our real estate tax rate to its pre-recession level of $1.29 per $100 of assessed value, the same rate it was in 2006. I'm also proposing that the city of Richmond impose its first ever tax on cigarettes of 50 cents per pack. These investments finally put the future in our city in our own hands. They will yield an additional $21.1 million and $3 million in annual revenue, respectively. With this new revenue, I am proud to announce that my budget provides $16.2 million for street paving and sidewalk payments. From Churchill to West Hampton, from Worthington Farms to Providence Park, these investments will allow us to support our neighborhoods in an equitable and sustainable way, not just this year, but every year. Additionally, and most importantly, my budget will also fully fund Richmond Public Schools budget request of $17.8 million in new funding to implement the dream for RPS strategic plan and provide much deserved salary increases to our teachers.
mention in my State of the City address, we also are submitting to you today a 20-year capital improvement plan that will guide our investments in streets and sidewalks, our community centers, police and fire stations, and our city fleet, among other properties. The $96.9 million CIP plan for the upcoming fiscal year 2020 makes a number of investments, including renovations to Powhatan and Southside community centers, and upgrades to Blackwell Playground and Chimborazo Park so that we can enhance programming for youth and senior citizens alike. We are also assigning additional dollars to restore bridges, thoroughfares, and to continue our progress towards Vision Zero. As we make these capital investments to ensure we restore and maintain our infrastructure, I believe we must also continue to expand access to public transportation and housing opportunities in our city. My budget provides an additional $965,000 to the Greater Richmond Transit Corporation for increased service and route frequency to those communities that need it the most. to the Affordable Housing Trust Fund to $2.9 million. <laughs> and proposes a commitment of $485,000 to our eviction diversion program, the first of its kind in the Commonwealth of Virginia. for all of our children. The $18.5 million 
in my operating budget for RPS will fund critical initiatives such as an equitable literacy plan to ensure all third grade graders are reading at, uh, at or above grade level. <laughs> New and engaging English and math curricula. <laughs> Increasing the number of school counselors and nurses available to our students. <laughs> Increasing the performance of the RPS bus system. Pay increases for the hard-working teachers and staff that are the lifeblood of Richmond High School. Let me be clear. This is an investment, a long-term investment. And like any investment, we have a right to expect a return on that investment. No excuses. Alongside the increase in funding, we will insist on accountability by proposing an amendment to the education compact we all agreed to in 2017 that will commit the school board to an annual scorecard from RPS to track progress and performance and a date certain to deliver their plan for the rezoning of city schools. Thank you, and God bless the great city. 